You got to get away from your own nest, which is being feathered. And you got to look ahead and say, in the general election, what will he look like to the average American? Unelectable. Unelectable. Conservatives in Hollywood have told me that who deal with images. Unelectable. Trump is super electable. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say to you. We're fighting for the live, our lives right now with ISIS. Trump will smash ISIS like a bug. Hillary will not. She'll continue what Obama's doing, which is placate them and compromise America. So I do want to go back again to the big issue of how we got here. And I want to go back to the fact that I said right at the beginning that the 60s were not all bad. It was not the 60s that ruined America. It was not the hippie movement that ruined America. It was when the communists took control of the hippie movement that the hippie movement was, was uh, uh, perverted, as it was. And then we go all the way back, and we see that it was not the hippies who ruined America. It was the communists who ruined the hippies who ruined America. And the very same communist virus that, are that is destroying America today is the communist virus that penetrated the free spirits of that time. And the reason this happened, as I observe this today, is that a free spirit is more easily manipulated than a rigid spirit. Many people were too rigid to even become a hippie. Many people were too rigid to learn how to dance. Many people were too rigid to grow their hair. Many people were too rigid to see if there was something more in life than just going ahead as a little careerist. They never understood the bigger world, and they hated anybody who stepped out of the, out of the norm. The same thing today. And... You have to understand that free spirits are not dangerous, they're not bad, because it enabled millions of us, including many of my listeners, to become free of spirits. But the communists entered that, those spirits, just as retroviruses infect humans, causing the common cold and AIDS, for example. And today we have a retrovirus in the White House named, named Barack Obama. He has infected the body politic with his hateful anti-American views and invaded many other cells or people with his nation-destructive ideas. We'll talk about the retrovirus of communism, the retrovirus. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. The world is falling apart because of the um, New World Order Universalists like Obama, Merkel, the United Nations, flooding the world with Muslims from countries, unvetted Muslims. The rape epidemic, no one even talks about it anymore in Germany. The German men stand up and they're attacked by the police. The same police in Germany who should be attacking the migrants and throwing them out of the country are attacking the nationalists in Germany who are trying to protect their women. Think about what I just said to you. Because the very same dynamic is playing out in the United States of America. There are millions of men who would like to rise up in this country and protect this nation. We wake up that Obama frees an Al-Qaeda explosives expert from Gitmo. We know that Obama is basically acting like a, a rogue president. Shall I say a criminal president? How is this even possible? We know that Hillary and the email scandal has reached, had reached a critical mass a while ago, anyone else would be indicted by now. Certainly a grand jury would have seen the evidence. And nothing happens. So it goes back again to the fact that a retrovirus has invaded this nation. Well, what is a retrovirus? I've called Barack Obama the equivalent of a retrovirus. A retrovirus is a fascinating organism. It's a virus that uses RNA, ribonucleic acid, as its genetic material. Now, most of our cells are made up of DNA. And when a retrovirus infects a cell, it makes a DNA copy of its own genome. And then it inserts itself into the DNA of the host cell that it invaded. And it starts to trick the cell that it invaded into thinking that that's what it is. And it causes diseases such as some forms of cancer, AIDS, even the common cold. So I just told you what it is. How does it do it? How does it trick the cell? Well, it's made up of genetic material that uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to become part of the cells that it invades, becoming just like the cell it invades, that it invaded. And then it allows many copies of the virus to be made in the host cells themselves. Right? Does that sound like what Obama has done to this country? Well, that's exactly what he's done. 
The entire Democrat Party has been invaded and infected by him. Not all of those in the Democrat Party will like this man originally. Not all of them were extremists like this man even seven years ago. Some of them had a scintilla of patriotism and a scintilla of sanity. But today the entire Democrat Party has been invaded and infected by the retrovirus called Barack Obama, who has infected them with his worldview that is so crazy they don't even know what they're doing because they're just like him now. They become, become in, in, in essence, carbon copies. They yak and yak and yak and repeatedly tells them to say to the de detriment of the United States and the world. And, of course, the same goes for a good portion of the Republican Party. It goes for 99% of the press corps. 99% of the press are infected by the retrovirus of liberalism or communism, whichever way you want to put it. But, again, I don't want you to lose the theme of my show because it's not about bashing the retrovirus in the White House. It's too boring to bash Obama. He does it every time he opens his mouth. Frankly, I think he's beneath contempt at this point. I don't even want to talk about him. You know what I'm saying to you? I want to talk instead about a today. I want to talk to you about what's happened to the free spirits of America and how free spirits are more easily infected or, let us say, invaded than a rigid spirit. Do you understand where I'm coming from today? Does anyone quite understand it? And do you want, I want to ask you, little listeners, are you a former hippie who became a conservative? Are there any listeners to this show who, in the 60s or 70s, consider themselves free spirit hippies who are now and have been for a very long time conservatives? And when did you become a conservative and why? What was the moment that opened your eyes to where you were going? I wouldn't even call you conservatives. I would call you nationalists, which I'm doing for book after book now. To me, the word conservative has lost its meaning. It's become almost a, an ick word. When I hear the word conservative, I think of some rigid fat guy trying to tell me how to live my life, and I know he's a hypocrite. I know he's a liar behind the scenes. So I don't even like the word. I'd rather use the word independent. What was the moment that you opened your eyes to where you were going? And the, the fundamental problem, as I see it, is that many people of the 60s uh, <clears throat> were free spirits. They thought they were, and they were. And many of them got stuck. They became like animals that fell into a tar pit. And they became frozen in time, and they still espouse 60s philosophy to this moment. To this minute, stuck repeating the same mantra of the 1960s that was placed in their head by the communists of the 1930s who were running the hippie movement of the 1960s. They never evolved. They don't even understand that they have destroyed their own lives and their own nation. They have not been able to evolve. And there are millions and millions of people like that. They're all over Hollywood. They're in the universities, otherwise intelligent people stuck in the tar pit of the past, unable to move on, un unable to evolve, unable to see what they're doing to this nation, taking their marching orders directly from the White House without even knowing it. And that's how evil and dangerous this retrovirus is. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. A president is a very powerful man. Powerful not only in what he can do politically, but what he can do mentally. And what this president is doing mentally to America and the world is beyond the comprehension of the average listener to this show. I don't have to list all the details. I've done so in many of my books. Government Zero, whether you read it or not, whether you heard about it or not, is irrelevant whether you heard about it or not. Although it was banned in San Francisco's media, Local Boy made real good. It's his 29th book. This one became number three on the New York Times list. And so I've been able to break through because I have a big audience of independent readers. I don't have to tell you about the insanity of this retrovirus in the White House granting the most terroristic nation on the planet, Iran, the right to develop nuclear weapons and missiles. Did you hear what came out today? That, did you hear what John Kerry said? Your, your jaw will, will drop and say, this can't be true. Why is he not being arrested for this? John Kerry made a speech that was just beyond comprehension, except in America, where no one even follows what anyone says anymore. You see, it's the cheeseheads versus the uh, knockwurst heads. That's all they care about. Go, team, go. Go, team, go. Go, team, go. Go, Dem, go, Republican. Go, Dem, go, Republican. Go, Dem, go, Republican. Cheeseheads versus the knockwurst heads. It goes all the way back to what I said at the beginning. 
So what is it that Kerry said? He said that uh, some of the billions that they're giving back to Iran will be used to fund terrorism. And nothing, no, not a word from the Jake Tappers of the world. Not a word from the Kool-Aid drinkers in the media. Not one word. Do you understand what's happening to America? Do you understand how destructive liberalism actually is? Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? So, I'll go back to a simple question. Were you a hippie in the 60s, early 70s, who became a nationalist? When did you become somewhat, I can't even use the word conservative, I would say realistic, about your survival? Because there's no other words I can use. There's no single word. I'm not trying to redefine you. I don't want to redefine you. We're living through, perple through perplexing times all over again. I've never seen anything like this period in my lifetime. To have a maniac who's acting like a retrovirus, who has and is infecting his entire party, and by the way, in a good portion of the opposition party, in a way that you could never imagine could happen in a free nation. It's hard to believe, but he's so smart and so clever and so powerful. I don't know what the enzyme is that Obama used. The equivalent of reverse transcriptase, maybe it's racism or the fear of being called a racist, but he has this enzyme. Enzyme, yes, is what he has, the mental enzyme. Obama has the equivalent of reverse transcriptase in his abilities, and he's invaded cells that didn't even know they were being invaded, and now they're actually mimicking his perverted worldview. So as I say, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about it because I was once a social worker. I was a teacher. I was a dreamer. I was a poet. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm Michael Savage. Have I really changed? I'm, I'm still a free spirit. I'm still a free spirit. I'm the same person. I don't have to apologize for my past. I'm very proud of it. I've never done anything wrong in my life that I'm really ashamed of. I mean, I'm a human being, so I'm imperfect. What I'm trying to say to you is we're living in strange times. We're living in very strange times. The cheese heads versus the knockwurst heads. One party wears a block of cheese on their heads, and the other party wears a knockwurst on their heads. That's about as much sense as I can make out of this. The corruption on both sides is equivalent. And the people who represent both sides are about the equivalent. There is almost no difference in the corruption and the hypocrisy of either side, which is why a true independent such as myself, Michael Savage, is misunderstood and reviled by both sides, and by the way, distrusted by both sides, because they don't own me. They can't make any money with me. And by not owning me, they cannot control me. And by not controlling me, and by not making any money with me, I'm a threat to them. And that's why I talked about free spirits versus rigid spirits. And I could turn it over to the callers right now, but I may not. I may go to the National Review, the GOP parade. I may go to the other stories that I said I would like to talk about today, about corruption running through both parties. And we'll go all the way back to the Ronald Reagan administration, because many of you think he was clean as the driven snow. You thought there was no corruption. Well, there was corruption. His attorney general, Edwin Meese, was the most corrupt attorney general uh, since the one we had under Obama. The only difference is this one under Obama was ideologically corrupt. He was never caught doing it for money. They're more dangerous than those who were doing it for money. But Edwin Meese was forced to resign. Going all the way back to President Reagan's press secretary, Lynn Nafziger. Why, why am I calling him corrupt? Well, you have to look up the Wed Tech scandal. And you have to find out how publicly as an officer, Elizabeth Dole, through Dole, Wed Tech won a $32 million contract to produce small engines for the United States Army. And this was only the first of many no-bid deals that eventually totaled $250 million, which was a lot of money in those days. And by the final years of Ronald Reagan's second term, WedTech's crimes had become too numerous to hide. An independent counsel was appointed by Congress, which later charged Attorney General Edwin Meese with complicity in the scandal. Why? Because his close friend had worked as a lobbyist for the company and sought help from Meese on WedTech contract matters. While Meese was never convicted of any wrongdoing, he resigned in 1988 when the independent counsel delivered the report on WedTech. The independent counsel, McKay, never prosecuted or sought indictment of Meese. But in his official report, which is still confidential, he was highly critical of Meese's ethics and urged further investigation of Meese's role in that scandal and others. 
such as Edwin Meese's efforts to help Bechtel Corporation build an oil pipeline on Saddam Hussein's 